Well, hello there. It is time for the final advice video that I do every year. The contest is now probably about 24 hours away from when you're going to see this. So as a tradition, I usually go through this to offer those of you taking the contest a little bit more advice as you head in. So here we go. Do you think that I count the days? There is only one day left, always starting over. It is given to us at dawn and taken away from us at dusk. French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre. So, uh, why the quote then? Because that's what it is. Tomorrow, Wednesday, November 6th is your day. It's your day to have a chance to achieve what you were aiming to achieve on this contest. Uh, for those of you who are taking the test for the first time or simply taking it for the fun of the test because you enjoy it, then some of this video might not apply to you as it's spoken more towards those who are using it as to actually compete and try to get to the American Invitational Math Examination. And that's it. That's the day given to you. It's tomorrow. It's given to you in the morning. What are you going to do with the day? And that's what that quote is all about. Uh, so let's go through some header topics. Uh, the MAA has new test security protocols. You might have seen my last video. If you have not, go see the video. Um, when they're releasing the test, we're hoping that this will result in less leaks and a more secure uh, integrity testing environment, all of that. So you can go check out that video for details on that. I'll probably point to it over there and it'll appear or something, I don't know, on a little like uh, clicker board or something. So uh, number two, to math or not to math on the day before? Uh, what do I think? I don't know. It's up to you. You know yourself. Right? If it was me, I would probably not be taking a contest in full. I might do one through 10 as a run just to stay sharp. In fact, the day of, maybe do a one through five run on some past contest you hadn't done in a while just to get the juices flowing. I really wouldn't want to tire myself out though by doing tons of problems on the day of. To me, that's not a good idea. Uh, the day before as well, you're not gonna be picking up too much like new knowledge at this time. It's usually a time for you to review what you have learned over the last year or the last several years of your preparation. So with that, you should probably focus on your review of your small notebook. If you keep one of those, if you don't know what they are, uh, there's a video on my channel that explains it called The Small Notebook Justified and Explained. Use the search feature and find it. It's basically a collection of a bunch of key ideas and concepts and things that you could learn that might give you a speed advantage on the test. And you want to really review all of those things to have them saturated in your thought process um, so that when you take the test, all these ideas are recently seen by you, thought about, and you're ready to potentially implement them. Um, I had several classes for this. Some of you have already asked about a, a class to be held in between the A and B test, which would be next Sunday. At this time, there's no plans. If I get enough requests, at least five, I will hold the class. Um, other than that, uh, let's get on to this. There's an election tomorrow as well, the day before the contest. You might have heard about it. I don't know. Uh, probably ignore all of that. I don't really care who you're supporting or don't support or who somebody else supports or how the world's going to end when candidate A or candidate B wins. All of that needs to be shut out. This isn't the time to think about it. I know that some of you think you're going to be very affected or one way or the other. I don't, it doesn't really matter. All of us will be affected by it in some way and you're going to have to make do with just focusing on what you can control right now. There's nothing that you can do about that. Most of you can't vote. You have your favorite team and I don't want any comments either in the channel. There should be places people can go where you don't have to be bombarded with political thoughts. Okay. So in general, we try to stay the most part away from this in my server as well. And I please do not put anything down below about what you think about various candidates and the world ending and wars. And I don't, it doesn't matter. Okay. Focus on a community that is about mathematics. And so it's kind of toxic. Don't, don't pay attention to what's going on. If you're well interested in this stuff, wait for after the contest, right? Just analyze it then. Focus on what you can control, which is your preparation, okay? So it's sad that it's the day before. It is what it is. What can you do? Mentally prepare. This is what you should be doing the day before. Mentally preparing. Uh, and that does not include whatever's going on in the world, okay? Just let it go and deal with it later. Any mindset, if you've never seen this video, I have about 270 videos on my channel. This is the third most watched video on the channel. It was filmed about four years ago and I, it's just basically good mental advice for your mindset, for you to think about what it's gonna take for you to connect 
and get to the second round of the competition. I would recommend you watch it on Tuesday, that is the day this video is coming out, so that you can prepare for the contest. It doesn't have great sound. Back then I didn't know much about recording sound, and so it is what it is. It's a little grainy in the sound, but it's got great advice. So pay attention, try not to skip around, try to absorb those ideas as well. I also recommend getting some exercise. Maybe the day of, go for a walk in the morning, a brisk walk, something. Get a little jog in, do some push-ups, do some crunches, something like that. Uh, five minutes to 10 minutes at least of some kind of physical exertion. It gets the juices flowing. It's good for your mind, it's good for your body. They are connected. So I highly recommend you do something like that. Maybe the day before as well. Um, next time a quote. So back, back to this whole Amy Mindset thing. Before you can win, you have to believe that you're a, win a winner. Winners think, look, act, and behave like winners. They focus on the daily process of doing what needs to be done to become a winner. Alistair McCain, he's a famous speaker and he's a leadership mentor and things like that that he does around the world. And again, focus on what the daily process of doing what needs to be done to become a winner. That's a lot what this video is about. And it's not focusing on things that you can't do anything about and that aren't going to matter right now. What matters is right now, the contest, it's on Wednesday and you need to prepare for that. So the day of the contest, what should you be doing? This is my advice, this is what I think. You should get eight to nine hours of sleep. Okay, all of you are growing, maturing, you need a little bit more sleep than adults need. Uh, you don't wanna be sleepy during the test. You don't wanna have that kind of thing. It affects how you can think, how quickly, all of that. So try to go to sleep early. Um, get rid of those, you know, all the thoughts you have, the anxiety and all of that, and make sure you can accomplish this. So small notebook review the day of. If it's me on the day of, I'm going through that thing over and over again constantly because I want to be saturated in the ideas. Okay, uh, the, bring it with you to the, the testing center. Just put it away before the test starts. Do that instead of looking around the room at what everybody else is doing and conversing. Don't do that. Focus. It's game day. Okay. Focus on what you need to do to achieve what you're trying to do. Box breathing. This is something I learned about in the last year. It's basically a way to calm the mind and reduce anxiety. And so it's breathing in through the nose for four seconds and then you hold it for four seconds and then you breathe out through the mouth for four seconds and then you hold that for four seconds and then you repeat. And it's, it has a, it's been very well known to relax and calm you down, reduce anxiety, reduce stress. So for those of you taking the test, you might have built up, okay, am I gonna do it, am I not? Use something like that before the test, a little bit to calm the nerves down and prepare yourself for what you are about to try to achieve. Okay, so a question, people ask me this all the time, when should I skip, how long into a problem? It kind of depends, okay? If it's one to five, problems one to five, and you're a minute and a half in, and you're just, you have no idea, you're drawing a blank, just skip, okay? If it's like six to 10, and you're two and a half to three minutes in, probably a little bit too long, just skip. Okay, when you skip, don't think, don't get a negative effect from that, okay? In fact, I think they put specifically questions to drain the time of students that have too big of an ego and they're not willing to skip. Do I know that for sure? I'm not part of their planning committee. I suspect it. There are certain questions that are very anomalistic. They're very different than other questions that have come up in the past. And if you're not gonna skip it, you're gonna waste 10 minutes on a problem number 11 because you're stubborn and you don't wanna skip. They're probably trying to weed you out. They're probably trying to keep you from getting to the next round because you don't have good control of your emotion or your mindset. And so that's, that's my guess, okay? I don't know for sure. So uh, in your 11 to 15 problems, 11 to 15 range, maybe skip after three, three and a half minutes, maybe four, something like that. Um, if you get to question 16 and you haven't probably skipped one or two, you might be doing it wrong or you're really smart and you're really fast and you just haven't been tripped up by anything yet. The test to a degree is a test of matchups. Do you match up well with what concepts are before you? You might get a bad matchup, so what? Skip it and go on to the next one. What happens a lot of times is you refuse to skip number five, but you have not done the rest of the test yet. So you know you need to get 10 to 11 to 12 more questions or so to get where you're trying to go. And so now you're trying to do that five with all this pressure to get it done because you know you have a lot more to go in the test. 
So instead, if you skip it initially, and then you move on, go to those questions. Now you've got to question 16 or so, your brain is more relaxed. You've gotten the majority of the questions you need. You can now go back to that question five, which for whatever reason was giving you trouble and give it another shot at that time. Don't force yourself to do it while you still have all the pent up anxiety of what else you have to accomplish on the test. That's my advice for that. The exact time to skip is different per person, per question, per situation, per test. It's not an exact science. You get a feel for it from having done a lot of past contests and having some experience. So anticipate setbacks, control your reaction. You're going to get a question that's a little bit difficult for you. You don't know why, you seem like you should be able to get it. It doesn't seem like it should be that hard, but for whatever reason you're not. Drop it and move on to the next set question. If you sit there demoralizing yourself and, and attacking yourself, you've just ruined the rest of the task. You can't do that if you're gonna be a competitor. You're gonna to have to roll with the punches and don't give yourself an emotional reaction to that. It's okay. Even the best students will sometimes skip a question or two, or they can't get, even me, I'll do a question sometimes and I can't get it within a certain amount of time. And I've done many years of training, okay? So it, you don't feel bad when that happens. Just drop it and move on. Okay, cut off predictions, I have no idea, right? This is, it's totally a guessing game. Do I think the test will be about the difficulty it was last year? Probably. Maybe a little harder, maybe a little bit easier. None of us really know. All we're doing is guessing, okay? So the cutoff last year I think was 105 and 103.5 for the AMC 10. Um, if you wanna be absolutely safe, you should probably aim for 16 right and nine skips. But even that's not safe, it's just a guess. Okay, 16 right and nine skips is a 109.5. It will probably, but not for sure, qualify you. But you're also going to need to know yourself. You need to have a feeling for how difficult the test is. Do I need to answer more or less? And then you also might have different goals. Maybe you're trying to make it to top 1%, DHR, USAMO, JMO, all those kinds of things. Obviously adjust your targets accordingly. Um, I don't know for the AMC 12, probably a 91.5 will get you there, something like that. It's been good enough in most of the last years but give or take a few points and have a feel for it. Just do the best you can. Don't really worry so much about the cutoff. Don't force yourself to answer questions that are beyond your pay, pay grade. And that brings us to guessing. I don't know, everybody wants to ask me, you know, when should I guess? If I can get it down to two, should I guess? You know, maybe it's up to you. For me personally, I don't wanna guess my way to success. I wanna get there by my own merit. If you have a different philosophy on that and you would like to guess, I know many students who missed qualifying because they guessed on a question, dropped the 1.5 points they would have gotten for skipping, and then they don't qualify as a result. So for me, I don't like to guess. Either I know or I don't know. The only kind of you know uh, modification to that, you might have a really strong feeling that some, some fact is true in a problem, but you can't prove it. You just know that it's true. You feel it deep within you. I know this is true. I just don't know how to establish it fully. Okay, so you're using a little bit of an assumption on those problems, maybe on those, and it just depends on how well you know yourself and how good your intuition is. Maybe on those you can ride with the assumption to your answer, but I'd be very, very careful with that. They put specifically things where they, they know you're going to assume and they put that trap answer in there just for you. So I would be very careful with that as well. I do not do that myself, but one in you know 200 problems, something like that, very rare. Okay, so my solutions. I try to get my solutions out on Thursday morning. They should be released ideally at 5 a.m. Pacific. I don't know for sure they're gonna get out at that time. We'll just have to wait and see. It depends on how things go and you know, all of that. So uh, if you wanna check this channel on Thursday around that time, if everything goes accordingly, I should be able to release my own solutions at that time. Um, the ones that I've got filmed so far at that point. So that's about it. I hope all of you have been preparing well. I hope you did prepare well over the last year. And if you didn't, let it go. Just do the best you can on the test that day. Good luck, and I'll see you guys in the next video.